stimuli from the nervous system reaches the neurons in the hypothalamus. What kind of stimuli do you think is coming in? These are my primitive <coughs> functions. Temperature. Balance is more in the cerebellum. So when I talk about these um, primitive functions, think about stuff such as think, of like, think about your temperature of your body, blood pressure, respiration, the creation of the hormones for procreation, hunger, thirst, cellular metabolism, meaning cellular growth, all right? Everything that's going to be primitive. Is everybody with me? So, some type of stimulus is coming in. For example, maybe I do not have enough thyroid hormone circulating in my blood. And that information is picked up. If I don't have enough thyroid hormone, what, do, what needs to be produced? Huh? More thyroid hormone. What gland is responsible for doing that? Not my anterior pituitary. But wait a minute. I was just told or just said the anterior pituitary helps to regulate body function and the secretions of other glands in the endocrine system. Yes, no, maybe. So, let's say that I have gotten the stimulus that says I need more thyroid hormone. That makes neuron synapse in the hypothalamus. They synapse the product that can be released from a neuron is a neurotransmitter. Does everybody remember that? Now, in this part right here, they're trying to show you that on this side, we're producing a product with the color green. Over here, we're producing the product with the color red. What do you think of when you hear red and green? Stop and go. So, hmm, let me think here for a second. I mentioned that everything was controlled by negative feedback. Does negative feedback mean I've got to start stump something and stop something? Yes. So they're trying to show me right here that the production, they term it either inhibiting hormones, because we're going to, these, since we're in the hypothalamus going to the pituitary, these are neuro hormones for the product, okay? This would be inhibiting, this one stimulating. Stop and go. Is everybody following me? Okay. Now, for this particular visual that they're giving us, <coughs> the circles down here are green. So our product that's getting released is what? Inhibiting or stimulating? It's going to be stimulating. So, we follow this neurohormone, which is going to be stimulating. Look how it synapses on these cells that are existing. Well, actually, for this side of the anterior pituitary, 
This hormone is released into the bloodstream because that's making a connection with a vessel. Note that to get to the anterior pituitary, it's going to travel in this ves uh, vessel structure, which is part of this portal system, and it's going to make its way to this cellular part of the anterior pituitary. We had the three parts of the anterior pituitary. Now, makes its way to its target tissue. Not every cell in that anterior pituitary has a receptor for what just got produced. Is everybody following what I just said? The hormone that got produced by those neurons in the hypothalamus, not every cell in the anterior pituitary has a receptor. So it will go to the cells of the anterior pituitary that have a receptor for it. Those cells which had a receptor for it will produce their product. So the stimulating, the stimulating greens told this cell to make its product. And its product gets released into the bloodstream. How is it that the hormones of the pituitary gland travel throughout the body through the bloodstream they have to make it to their target tissue in this case since I'm using the thyroid hormone this was the production of the thyroid hormone it's going to travel to where table three Table four. Table two. Thank you. I made thyroid hormone. Is it going to go to my pancreas? Wow. Okay. So thyroid hormone is going to go to the thyroid gland. And it's all because of this controlling this, releasing that to control the thyroid gland. Yes. <coughs> Because that's the only thing I pointed out was that this was the green and therefore the hormone that got released was to stimulate the thyroid gland. If we had followed the red, that product is going to stop. That one's going to be the inhibiting. Two different things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two different things. Yes, no. Yes. So everybody can look at this picture and understand it now. Okay. Cool. So, based on that information, we get the production of the releasing or stimulating and inhibiting hormones. So, what do we have that gets produced? We have growth hormone, releasing hormone, growth hormone, inhibiting hormone, or known as somatostatin. Don't forget that term. Thyrotropin releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, Prolactin releasing hormone, prolactin inhibiting.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many hormones did I say are produced by the pituitary gland as a whole? Nine. Nine. <clears throat> so that tells me the other two come from the posterior pituitary. So this list are the hormones that are going to be coming from the anterior pituitary gland. Now let's take a rip, just a quick peek here. We increase or we decrease. Now let me see, growth hormone, thyrotropin, corticotropin, gonadotropin, prolactin, About how many areas of the body have I hit? There's one area of the body that these hormones don't hit. Any idea? <coughs> and actually, no. It actually hits that too. No, it hits everywhere. There is not a part of the body. Prolactin, of course, goes to the breast. Cortico goes to the adrenal glands. Growth, <coughs> thyroid, everywhere. from the half of the pea that sits at the base of your brain. Have you ever known someone who had pituitary gland problems? I just know him for a scene like a store where like a guy, he's a gigantic number, he's like someone sits on his pituitary gland. There's a lot of growth on that. Yeah. So, the the gigantic. Yeah. Um, it depends, but what it, it's a little more common than, than you would think, but there are tumors that can show up on the pituitary gland, and they can be very devastating to the person because this is pretty much controlling everything in their body. This, there's surgery that can be done, but think about where this pituitary gland sits. Okay. Think about where, and I know it's kind of crooked, but that's about the best I can do since it fell out and I can't put it back in. Um, think about where it sits. It, it is a horrible place. The way that they have to do surgery, they have to go through the base of your mouth, through the roof of your palate, up to the base of your brain, behind your sinuses. Very nasty surgery. They have medication that they can give people that um, if the tumor is caught in time, but they have to take it for the rest of their lives. It's a chemotherapy pill, and they have to take it for the rest of their lives. But the devastation can be great from a tumor on the pituitary gland. So now, anterior pituitary. What's going to happen with our posterior pituitary? Mm 